Marvin Harrison Jr. looks to be the third option on offense during the start of the 2024 season. Don't panic. Let's discuss. <laughs>
So I, I say that as an exercise because you're right. I mean, they're going to run the ball. I think that's something that kind of gets lost in people. Oh, Kyler Murray is a running quarterback. They're going to run and gun. No, this was a boring offense last year. And guess what? It mm -hmm. worked with Josh Dobbs. And the Cardinals won a game in Philly on the road. They should have beat Seattle. Like, the proof of concept is already there. So, as you mentioned, like, you run the ball. Trey Benson, I, you know, I want to ask you about here in a second, too. Like, I mm -hmm. did a show yesterday. I said Trey Benson is going to have a massive impact on what this offense looks like if you can trust running the ball 30-plus times a game with those two guys combined. Yeah. Even say he has that rookie curve. You've got Trey McBride. You're going to run play action. You've got Michael Wilson. You've got Greg Borch, who's poised to have, you know, his first – real breakout year with the spotlight on him. This is a good problem to have. And if Marvin Harrison Jr. takes yeah, over his yeah. number one role, the Cardinals are laughing to the bank if he comes out of right, Justin right. Jefferson in year two, in year one, right out the gate. Yeah, and, you know, I think maybe a, a better way to maybe ask the question um, is, or, or where I really feel see, you'll see the, the benefit or the, the return on investment of the fourth overall pick is when it's third down or the you know the last five minutes of the game and you need somebody to make a big play, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be able to separate himself. You're going to be able to see the benefits of having MHJ on your roster, Maserati Marv, as you refuse to say, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in the passing attack. But, you know, outside of those moments and, and what this offense wants to be is, is establish the run, set up, put themselves in success, uh, in, in situations for success where Kyler Murray isn't facing what he faced so many years in the Cliff Kingsbury offense, you know, second and long, third and long, three and out. They want to be able to put themselves in situations that are, are going to be, you know, consistent with them staying on the field, moving the football, and putting up points on the board. And it, it's, you know, it, as much as they know Marvin Harrison Jr. is a part of the solution, he's not going to be like Kyler Murray was asked, to be this savior. And it, it's good. It's like you get, you got Marvin Harrison jr. There. He, he can be a game breaking player. And I think so can Michael Wilson. And then Trey McBride, his emergence last year, like he said at his press conference on Tuesday, like Craig Morgan asked him, like, are you, can you reach a thousand yards? And he's like, Oh yeah, I can reach a thousand yards. It's like, but then you start crunching the numbers and I know math is hard for you, Clancy, but like, <laughs> I mean, there's only one football to go around. And, like, you look at San Francisco last year, and the Cardinals want to do some things like the 49ers do. And, they, they, you know, they've got concepts from San Francisco and Philly and Cleveland. Like, San Francisco had Brandon Ayuk, who had over 1,000 yards last season firmly. You had George Kittle over 1,000 at the tight end position. And then Debo knocking on the door with about 900. And then you had the season that Christian McCaffrey had. I mean, I know that's Niners light, but that's kind of the blueprint right there. Yeah. And the the thing that people need to remember and need to remember and need to remember is this defense is not going to be ready next year to live mm -hmm. up. Like this is going to be offense heavy. The offense is carrying this team. And sure, what we saw last year, again, proof of concept wise is great. They've got a murderer's row, especially in the first eight weeks of offenses they're playing against. So the best defense the Cardinals are going to have is staying on the field on offense. It's never been more true than this year as that defense transitions into one of, of actual relevancy with a bunch of young guys in key positions. At Bo Brock on Twitter, PHNX Cardinals, joining me here. Um, I was forced to do this. I just want to let everybody know. Um, you know, <laughs> to build a family, you know, what everybody says, it's, it's not all it's cracked up to be. Um, the secondary is a question. Mm -hmm. Got young talent. They allocated draft funds to it. They allocated Sean Murphy bunting to it, bring him over in, in, in free agency. Is it enough to take that big zero to one jump coupled with Garrett Williams, who was drafted last year? We'll discuss it next. I was Clancy locked on Cardinals. Your team, yours every day. This episode of Locked On Cardinals is brought to you by eBay Motors, Passion Drive, and Patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts to your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash, man. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge rewards. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. 
eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is also brought to you by Bird Gang Travel Club. They provide you the best and only fan travel experience for Cardinals road games. We're talking anywhere from 50 to 500 fans on a given trip. It's hard to take a vacation sometimes, you know, but you look at this. They're going to be in Buffalo week one, Green Bay week six, Miami week eight. As of now, they've got tickets from row five or closer in week one in Buffalo at Orchard Park or in South Beach in Miami in week eight. It's a family trip, man. They've got top-notch hotel stays in their packages for three or four nights, lower-level game tickets, as I mentioned, parties each night with open bar and advertisers, unique fan tours of Lambeau Field and Niagara Falls, souvenir trip, patch state 48 trip shirt, and more. Visit Burgang travelclub.com to see all your packages today. They got payment plans too, man. We don't have the cheese up front. They got payment plans for you. Sign up by the end of the month. Receive a signed Paris Johnson Jr. mini helmet for anyone in your package. Use code locked on to receive a bonus signed mini uh, mystery mini helmet or football from a current Cardinals player or alumni while supplies last. Birdgangtravelclub.com for merch. Birdgang.com. Locked on Cardinals. Let's bring him back. Full bra. Hair looks fantastic. I see that Propecia is really working. At Bob Rack on Twitter. THNX Cardinals. Um, yeah. Like, you know, we get through this slow season. You and I were talking before we recorded. Like, it's like, all right, well, it's a slow season. And this has never been a faster slow season with all of the things setting up in place to explode in week one. Like, this is an experiment in a science class. Like, let's hope this doesn't just explode because there's still a chance that things that we don't discuss until the end of the season, what if Kyler Murray doesn't work out? What if this offense doesn't work? What if the defense isn't good enough? What if Jonathan Gannon with that? Like, there's still so many question marks, but the runway is such that this team has never had more opportunity to succeed than they do now, which is really all you want going into a season, right? I mean, we can't just say it's rainbow. We haven't seen, we still haven't seen it yet which is the right. only thing, the, the last puzzle piece. But this is rearing up to be, gearing up to be, you know, one of the most exciting seasons in the history of the organization. We can say that because this season, this has been a losing organization for a long time. You know? Yeah, I mean, so, you, you, had, uh, you, you had a team last year that everybody counted out before the season, and rightfully so, right? I mean, there wasn't people that were on the fence or skeptical about, you know, what this team was capable of. It was, they just blew it up. And they tore it down and it was a rebuild. But what you did learn about this organization now under its new leadership and Jonathan Gannon and Mana Yasaport is that they're going to scratch and claw forever. They're going to, uh, they, they, you see buy-in from the players and you see good, co- good coaching. And with the, you know, what they've accumulated over the last two off seasons under Mana Yasaport, it's better player. So good coaching and good players that usually trends, you know, to good results for organizations. You know, it's it's not going to go, hey, four wins to six wins. I think that there's an excitement because what we saw, Kyler Murray essentially goes, full, you know, 500 and has returned with a really bad roster. What can he do with a good roster? What can he do with, like, really good playmates? And, you know, I think that that's why there's such excitement right now. Why hope it's springing eternal here in the desert. Yeah, and you know the the biggest shift from the last regime to this one is, especially with the young players, them being in a system where they've got veterans that are playing their position, so they don't have to be thrust into the Marco Wilson action where it's like, hey kid, mm. you were just drafted, you are CB two, when you don't really have a CB one in Byron Murphy. Good luck. There's right. no safety net. There, it was a high wire act without any sort of safety on the bottom. And now you look at all the rookies. They've got help. Mm -hmm. They've got veteran help. Now, when we pivot to the secondary, this is still the biggest question mark, like the pass rush and the secondary. But if one can take that big step forward, it covers up for the other. And I think with the talent dispersed, it could be either one at this point. But when you look at the secondary, you've got Buda Baker, you've got Jalen Thompson, the usual suspects. And then you've got Garrett Williams coming off an above average rookie year. I mean, the game never looked to be too fast for him when he was on the field. You've got studs, hard hitters, Max Melton, Elijah Jones coming in. You've got Rabbit who's going to back up Buda Baker. You've got young talent coupled with the safeties, Sean Murphy Bunting coming in from Tennessee. Do you see this as still being a massive question mark? Or do you think these guys are going to be ready to rock week one in Buffalo? Like they're going to get a test right away. Yeah. Well, I mean, let me just kind of put it in this perspective, right? Like 
I like Sean Murphy Bunting. You know, I, I spent some time talking to your coach and Lockdown NFL and Tyler Rowan, who uh, he covers the Titans closely, and you know, said that it wasn't a scheme fit for Sean Murphy Bunting last year in Tennessee, and that he's going to probably be in a, a way better situation in his own coverage that Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rollis like to deploy. And I, and I absolutely agree with that. I think Sean Murphy Bunting, when I've seen him in OTAs and mandatory mini camp during the open portion of the practice, like it's Sean Murphy Bunting. It's the two guys you mentioned, Buda Baker and Jalen Thompson. Like those are if, – if that's your defensive secondary and that's your base and you need to find out between the collection of draft picks between 2023 and 2024 and somebody to emerge in your base defense for your four-person defensive secondary, that's not bad. Like your options are, okay, mm-hmm. we need to find who's going to – who's going to emerge between Garrett Williams, Max Melton, Elijah Jones, Starling Thomas, Keytrell Clark, for one spot, two yeah. spots when they move to uh, nickel. So I think it, it's it's in a way better space as you were kind of mentioning where it was like, oh, Marco Wilson and Marco Wilson is going to fail each and every week harder than the previous week. So I I, you, I, I do think that the the secondary, uh, I, as far as my concerns, like sure, you, you're not completely sold on it, but at the same time, it's not keeping me up at night. Yeah, and it's – it's fascinating because of the skill set of the players who were drafted. I mean, it's very similar. Like Max Melton, the biggest knock on him was he looked at the quarterback too much. That can be taught. You know, he's a tackler. You and I with Patrick Peterson, we wrote him pretty hard about not kind of being a, a guider out of bounds or a guider into a linebacker who can make a tackle. Patrick Peterson wasn't a he wasn't a hard hitter. And I think this secondary now is one that is is that whether it be in the run game or yeah. or in the passing attack, you know, do you see either of these guys in Max Miller, Elijah Jones specifically, you know, the draft picks? I mean, even Gary Williams, again, depending on depending on scheme, depending on base, yeah. can just, like from what you've seen at camp, can just jump in and be that guy week one? Is this going to be an embarrassing to- situation potentially? I think it can be. Like I, I think what they project Max Melton to be is Jonathan Gannon's version of Richard Sherman, right? A, a very like in you know, Richard Sherman, you could knock him all you want, like he's a scheme corner, but he was an elite scheme corner. And like I think that's what Jonathan Gannon looks like. He doesn't want Patrick Peterson, he doesn't want Revis Island. He wants a guy that's gonna play in his zone heavy scheme to its best of ability. I think he really likes the length, the athleticism from both Max Melton, Max Melton, most importantly, and then Elijah Jones. But I think what would serve this defensive secondary best is in year two, Garrett Williams makes the case to not come off the field. Like to be the guy that starts opposite Sean Murphy Bunting in base. And then sure, like it, it, is he more like well-suited to play slot? Like he's got the size, he can play big nickel. Like I think that Garrett Williams, if he can make himself uh, that every down corner, that would be the best option for the Cardinals because then you don't have to go through it's a severe learning curve as most of these corners have to go through each when they come to the NFL. Right. Bo Brock at Bo Brock on Twitter, PHNX Cardinals, one of the duo over there with him and Johnny Venerable do a great job. Um, so one last thing before we get out of here, because, you know, the, the cornerback position, Max Melton specifically is just, and this has been talked about, but whenever you talk about the secondary, you got to bring it back. Like, Monty Osborne made a concerted effort to trade back and get his guy from Rutgers after trading back. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't think he thought that all of those corners were going to go in a row, you know, with Kool-Aid McKinstry and Cooper DeGene and, and Kamari Lassiter. And then he was like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. But if it fits the scheme, like this, that pick, just like Steve Kimes trading up for Buda Baker, which in my opinion was his best draft pick ever because he saw a guy. He's like, this is the guy. They're going to trade up to the top of the second round and you're going to draft him right ahead of Seattle. And they did, and he's been great. If Max Melton becomes a Pro Bowler, this will mm-hmm. go down as a you know as a signature move by Monty Osborne. Now I know it's been discussed. Do you think that this was a whoopsie daisies where it's like all four of these guys are graded the same, so whoever's there, you pick up an extra third and you'll draft that player when you trade back, or was Max Melton really the guy that they were targeting? I think there are a few positions that you can give this organization the benefit of the doubt and you know Gannon is not just a coach he's a former DB himself he's a DB coach that's where he cut his teeth in this league and he, he's a guy that scouted uh before he hit the coaching rank so I think that you know with him and Monty being in lockstep and I think Monty maybe even just giving Jonathan Gannon the ability to kind of make a pick 
it, it kind of stinks of that, right? I think that in, in the best way, and you look at the the collection of CBs that went off the board, it's like Kamari Lasseter, sure, he he played at Georgia. It was very impressive. Had a great collegiate career. He ran a 4-6. Like, there, there was a lot of red flags around Kamari Lasseter. Did he benefit from – you know, the beast of a front seven that Georgia always has, right? And then you had Cooper DeGene. It's like, okay, well, he probably projects best as a nickel corner or maybe transitioning the safety, where you look at who's most well-suited to thrive at the NFL level, size, athleticism, and the only knock on him was he went to a non-traditional football, uh, not a traditional football power in Rutgers, but sure, they were Big Ten, and when he played against Marvin Harrison Jr., he showed up and showed out. Like, I think Max Melton absolutely – uh, is just uh, a testament to how the Cardinals are different now, and where they're going to lean on their their evaluation and their scouting, and it can it's going to pay off with guys like Melton showing up and, and being big time NFL player. Far cry from Cliff Kingsbury choosing Andy Isabella, huh? Look how far <laughs> we've right. come. Alex Nancy, locked on Cardinals. Bo Brock, PHNX Cardinals, joining me um, as we get our way through the sludge of the slow season. We're three weeks away from camp, like. This is going to be a wild ride from June 19th on. Um, so keep it here. Please go to the YouTube channel, search Lockdown Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, Drew Petzing. Sometimes, Bo, and you'll remember, because it happened a lot more with me than with you when you co-hosted the show, I call things two years early. Okay? <laughs> this is one of them. Heed my warning. Please discuss it next. Lockdown Cardinals, your team, every day. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by FanDuel. Okay, NBA is over. Baseball's in full swing. I'll tell you what. I wish baseball was my favorite sport. Bo and I actually talk about this a lot. I wish baseball was my favorite sport. It's like March Madness for six months. 162 games in, what, 178 days or whatever it is for your favorite team. FanDuel's got you covered for all of it. You want to take a shot at who's going to hit a home run in any specific game? FanDuel. You want to, you know, do a single game parlay for who's going to have total bases and strikeouts and everything like that, FanDuel. And on top of that, odds are out for MVP of the 2024 NFL season. Kyler Murray, 50 to 1. He's looked at, there was a couple different articles out where that had him as a dark horse to win MVP. You can go put your cheese down at FanDuel. And right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's 200 bucks you can use to bet everything. Baseball, home runs, which is part of baseball. I don't know if you knew that. The Euro Cup and future NFL MVP odds, they're already up and live. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win to your summer bucket list. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right. Bo Brock, PHNX Cardinals, joining me here. Um, you know it's slow when I have Bo on. <laughs> you know, it's just... Do a little charity. You know, it, it's nice. Yeah. It's nice to give back. You know, it's nice to give back. Follow him on Twitter at Bob Rags. Um, <laughs> please go to the YouTube channel. So it's Lockdown Arizona Cardinals. Hit that subscribe button. Um, Every day, thanks for being around. I can't. This is bonkers. A season. So I guess in the podcast world, this is we're going into our A season, both of us. That's Earth, crazy. You're, that is insane. It's just, it's coming from sports radio and then pivoting just to podcast. Well, you guys, obviously, you know, you have the reporting element over PHX Cardinals too. It's just, mm. we've, we've been on that curve, the wave, we've just rode the wave of what was next the entire time. And it's just, it's insane to see what the podcast world has become. And um, yeah, I'm happy that uh, we're not doing it anymore, but it's nice to see you across the pond over there, downtown Phoenix with PHX Cardinals, you know, it's good. Absolutely. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So Drew, Drew Petzing, Bo. Um, mm -hmm. I started this last year, especially midway through the season, when it's like, oh, he's making Joshua Dobbs look like a pro bowler. What are we doing <laughs> here, guys? Like, this is an offense that's so boring. It's like watching paint dry. And then you have that one fake RPO, Josh Dobbs 50 yard touchdown run over Xavier McKinney for a touchdown. It's like, wait, wait, what was that? What, what mm -hmm. are we seeing here? Or Hollywood Brown, see, like, like, Drew Petzing is going to be a hot name after this season if he replicates what happened last year this year. Is there a world that they can Ben Johnson, Drew Petzing before he leaves? Because that's it. Drew Petzing is the most important coordinator on this team because mm -hmm. the offense is so important with Kyler. Do you see a world where they can keep him or is he taking a job elsewhere when he gets a chance? 
I I see that there's a certain amount of loyalty with Gannon's staff. Like you saw it with the defensive side where Nick Rollis, it wasn't his only chance to become a DC. Like once uh, Gannon left Philly, like I think there was a chance for him to replace Gannon as the DC for the Eagles. I know Denver was involved there and Nick Rollis was a pretty, you know, warm commodity when he was barely 30 years old as this, you know, the defensive Sean McVay. And he chose Gannon and Petsing and Gannon, you know, their, their relationship began back in Minnesota a long time ago. So I think there's a certain amount of loyalty there. And I don't know if Drew Petsing might have some Ben Johnson in him where he might realize that the, any opportunity is the best opportunity and that he could, he could stay back, but it really, I think it's going to depend on what becomes available. Like if, if he's given, you know, let's say, the Colts job or let's just say in new England, things go South, like, and you're just going to go be a a head coach, but with really no pull and you've got ownership that's going to be breathing down your neck, you know, Petsing might be able to kind of do the pros and cons and realize, okay, you know what? I'll just be loyal to JG bet on myself and then wait this out for another year. Like it's inevitable at this point that Ben Johnson is going to become a head coach. Mm -hmm. Um, And if, if Petsing puts himself in that position, if he has, two eye-opening seasons last year where he's doing it with a guy that had, it was an NFL cast-off and Joshua Dobbs, and then really doing it with Kyler Murray, unlocking Kyler Murray, where people had cast off as well and made their own kind of ideas of who he is. And Petsing's able to get him back on track, and this offense explodes, and is what we talked about earlier in the first segment. Yeah, I mean, people are going to be calling. Like, our guy – uh, friend of the PHX Cardinals program, Brad Spielberger, was already putting him on a short list last year with the Bears because he wanted like an offensive guru. And like, who are the who are the who's on that short list right now? The top of it is Ben Johnson. And I think if you're looking at like top five, I think you could make a case for Petsing to be in that offensively. Yeah, I mean, you look at what with with the RFB enemy. It's just unfortunately, it's the best example because he was there for so long. Regardless, irrespective of him. Uh, you know, uh, interviewing and not getting head coaching jobs. Like if the money's close, like it was with Ben Johnson, if the money's close and Jonathan Gannon isn't a fully formed head coach, you know, like I I call it the cabinet where he's the president and you've got everybody else around him. None of the coordinators have had this job before. It's like, I hope that at some point we come into a world here where you look at a head coach job. And if it's just about the money, your current employer may meet you close and give like he has full control over the offense. Yeah. He has like autonomy yeah. over the offense. So it's like you have Kyler Murray, you walk into a rebuild with it with a QB one already. Like if the cart let you, we see quarterbacks struggle. Look at Josh Allen. Like how how you struggle after an OC leaves after the system changes. It's like an OC is so important in this day and age. So I, I I hope that they would fight like hell, tooth and nail, to keep him. We'll see if he replicates. Obviously, so far, so good is the mantra, where it's like we don't really know, but so far, so good that that they'll keep him. And I know you're up against it, but if if Petsing does – and it's a good problem for the Arizona Cardinals to have, and it's not one that we're used to here in the desert, right? It's been a long time. They've got an in-house replacement, like – we we already know who Petsing's successor is. So there's going to be some continuity. Like, I, I think that if, if Petsing moves on, like you're looking at Drew Terrell, your passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach as the next one. He was already interviewing for offensive coordinator jobs before he took the Cardinals job uh, after being in Washington and developing those young receivers there for the commanders, including Terry McLaurin. So I think that uh, it would, it would, it would be good for the offense to have that success to get Petsing on the map and the radar. But then also it wouldn't be a complete loss. Like, Oh, we're starting from scratch. We got to go find our new guy. Like say Philly's dealing, had to deal with when Steichen left. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's true. And you know, even if it's not in the house, look at the Cardinals roster, people are going to be lining up to want to run this offense, you know? So it's, it's regardless of where it lands, if things go well this year, Pandora's box officially be open to an organization that is named the Arizona Cardinals that will be unrecognizable aside from name only, which is something we're on the precipice of if this trajectory continues. Monty Osafort could be the GM for the next decade. GMs don't turn over. 
unless he gets offered a president job somewhere else. Like there's, this is something that can be sustainable. The Cardinals have top five money next year. They've got almost their full bounty of picks. This is what a hard reset gone right looks like. And it's completely predicated upon 2024 and how they perform and how they produce. That can be the catalyst for all of the good things to come. And you're looking at that compared to what's happened over the last 40 years of this organization. It's kind of bonkers to wrap your head around. Bull Brock at Bob mm-hmm. Rack. Uh, tell them where they can find you. Um, yeah. Wherever yeah. you find podcasts. And, of course, where you can uh, – you can just like on this YouTube page, you can go find us at PHNX Sports. Subscribe to our channel over there. Awesome. I just muted you so nobody heard you. Alex Clancy, Lockdown <laughs> Cardinals. Remember, without you, there is no me. I'll talk to you in a while.